Well, thank you everybody for coming today. Uh, my name is Rose Dennis and I work with Technomedia. And Technomedia has been uh, in marketing and communications for over 27 years in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island in its entirety. So we really believe in people being successful here at home. We uh, work here ourselves, we all live here, we don't want to go anywhere else. <laughs> We're pretty well situated in what we love and what we do. Uh, in my role at Technomedia, I work in the communication strategies and I help people develop plans and implement them. I help us uh, secure business through other opportunities, writing RFPs and all that dry proposal stuff. Um, but every once in a while I get to do something fun and come out and do some public speaking and help people get engaged in what we love, which is how to market your business and how to have fun with it and how to be successful here at home. It's always bringing it back to what you can do with what we have here. And a lot of people are surprised about the services that you can get here in Prince Edward Island. Everyone always thought you had to go away for it, but when you start doing your homework, thanks to the internet and thanks to word of mouth, we're finding that we have these top notch services here in PEI. So we don't have to think small anymore as businesses in Prince Edward Island. Uh, we can think on a global scale better for our business that way and better for you to to grow on your passions so with that being said I'll just dive in we're here to talk about YouTube YouTube is huge <laughs> we can't talk about everything about YouTube today but uh, we'll talk a little bit about the marketing and advertising platforms that you can use give you a start give you a little rudimentary uh, information about uh, what people are doing for YouTube to make their businesses successful and some simple ways to get you inspired to start using it as a marketing tool for yourself. So bear with me, we were having some little challenges with our feed so I'm going to have to press two buttons at once and hopefully I can continue to do this throughout the presentation <laughs> so I can keep up with everybody. So when a lot of people think about YouTube, they're thinking about videos like this. This is the majority of people spend their time doing this and we'll just, if it'll pop up. Okay, so how's that projecting? So this is what you normally think of when people are on YouTube. They're looking up things that entertain them. This is what the youth are looking for. Um, but YouTube is multifaceted. So while this is cute, and this is great, this isn't what we're here to talk about. <laughs> but these poor dogs, they try hard, and they're looking for different ways to solve their problems. So, and that was my, that was like my old dog, Becky. She was a French bulldog, and that would be exactly what she did. She was stuck on her back once and couldn't get up. We had to roll her over. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you just give up. And that would be my current dog. That's how she would handle that situation. It's a little, oh. <laughs> Poor thing. Poor guy. <laughs> what are you throwing things at me for? So anyway, we could watch these all day, which I know we'd love to. <laughs> but um, that is what a lot of people instantly come to mind with when, when you're thinking about YouTube. However, we're here to talk about it as a tool. So I just wanted us to get comfortable, all in the same mind frame, nice and relaxed, watch some dogs fall down. and. Uh, there we go. So, then we go into the, the meat. YouTube. YouTube was launched in 2005. Now, that's not yesterday. We're already talking you know, a good number of years that they've been up and running. It take, took time for them to develop it. But when you think about their numbers now, they have over a billion users. You average that out, that's a third of all internet users worldwide. And that is a significant reach. Every day, people watch hundreds of hours of YouTube and generate 
billions of views. I know my kids are like this with their phones all day. And it's YouTube all the time. There are more than 400 hours of video uploaded every minute. So in the time we're sitting here today, think of how much new footage is out there that people are going to be interested in and trying to get content for. The number of hours people spend watching videos, watch time, is up 60% consistently year after year. It's the fastest growing now than we've ever seen it in the past two years. And the number of hours people spent watching videos on mobile is up 100% year after year. So that's quite significant. They watch videos from how to, uh, to be entertained, news and sports, um, and then they, they watch things that are very specialized, things of their interest or their niches. So, but YouTube is interesting because people aren't just watching, it's now a social platform. It's a social network where fans uh, comment and creators comment back and you start building relationships and communities. So if you're passionate about something, an opportunity to get people passionate about what you're passionate about is through YouTube. With YouTube, you can drive in-store sales, you can launch a new product, you can increase online sales, build awareness, become a leader in your industry. So those, that's by no means a, uh, a big list of what you can do with YouTube, but it is a comprehensive one. And the opportunities just through those five bullet points would afford you a lot of leverage for your business or your endeavors. Um, a lot of people are using YouTube as a primary marketing tool now. Uh, Google owns YouTube, in case you didn't know. So Google is trying to make it very easy and accessible for people who want to market on YouTube. And I'll get into how easy they make it in a little bit. Um, and since YouTube allows people to discover, watch, and share original content, that video content beca can become an easy way to capture attention, um, inform, and build those relationships, which is what marketing always comes down to being about. So with anything that you're endeavoring, you should be setting goals before you start out. You can start out without a plan. Um, so when you want to start thinking about the elements of YouTube that you want to use for business, um, we start thinking about what are our short term? What are our long term goals? Where do you want your channel to be in two months? Well, what about six months? Or what kind of success do you want to see in the first two to three years from now? Write it all down as you're planning. There's ideas when you're brainstorming that may not be uh, achievable in your first um, forays into YouTube, but in that two to three year plan, come back to that brainstorm idea and you might be a little closer into making that achievable and, and to be able to happen for your channel. Why you use YouTube is going to impact how you use YouTube. So you really have to get down to why am I using it? It's not just because everyone else is out there or it's fun, because it's gonna be a lot of work. So you have to figure out what your reason is so that you can provide the biggest impact as you can continue. And this is very important. Find your niche. Find that point of difference. I always talk about point of difference with my clients because this is what makes you unique. This is what makes you special. And no one else can be you. Only you can present that in the most authentic way and engage people. So what are you going to focus on for YouTube? What is your industry topic, maybe? What do you want to talk about or share? Um, choosing an industry topic or a niche, that'll help you focus your content so that people will see what you're impassioned about and that will lead them to become interested and then engage with you. Uh, if you're simply though, if you're not passionate about it, even if it's in within your industry, if you don't like it, don't talk about it. Because you'll have a hard time talking about a topic you don't care about and then it comes off as disingenuine. 
Now, that's not to say you can't talk about something controversial if you want to, like the politics. <laughs> you may not like one party over another, but if that's what you're talking about, that's different. That's a different approach. But generally speaking, um, you should stay away from things that you, you don't enjoy instead of, and just focus on the, the things that you really do love. That way, uh, you won't lose your motivation and you'll be able to keep your channel growing. Be creative in your name choice. Now, you will talk about how YouTube is comprised in just a moment, and uh, I wanted to bring the creativity up front, though, because Technomedia, we're a creative company. We're always encouraging people to be creative. And when you're thinking about your branding and putting yourself out there on YouTube, you get to pick a channel name. And this is an extension of your brand. And so people get to choose what the channel is, and it stands out and incorporates something that uh, about your niche or industry at the same time. Try to make it fun. That takes a lot of brainstorming, and sometimes with friends, sometimes with wine, you know. <laughs> and those are the ways that you can garner some crowdsourcing for in, for information. And one I, I just mentioned to Greg before we started was a good one that's trending right now. is called Wine About It Wednesdays with Matt Belisai. And I'm not sure if anyone in the room is familiar with this gentleman just yet, but every Wednesday, Matt wanted to get drunk at his desk, complain about stuff, and it didn't matter what it was. It just, he wanted, he's talking negative, but he, his passion is about talking negative. Um, I wouldn't watch it in the office unless you've got headphones. <laughs> um, but it, it, his YouTube channel and his his entitle of his program and show wine about it Wednesdays, he sits there, he drinks wine at his desk, and he wines for a good six minutes about a topic. Right now, it's why he hates fall. All putting down lattes that are spiced with pumpkin and <laughs> leaves blowing and shawls, you name it, nothing is off topic. He talks about the coworkers, he talks about people in restaurants, he talks about all those little things that we all think secretly sometimes and then he blows it up. And he has, he's getting millions, millions and more every week, and it's generated through BuzzFeed. So um, check that out. Actually, no, Matt is American. It's an American program, and it was funny because he did bring, yeah. No, no, no one can eat. I have a theory, my own theory about pumpkin lattes and pumpkin everything. Uh, but he brought in a, a British friend of his to explain the difference between British chips in British, you know. He did a whole segment there. I think Malcolm would have found it quite funny. So um, while we know what we can do with YouTube, that's just a very quick synopsis of what you can do with it, uh, we really want to know how, right? We want to know how to use YouTube to m give us an advantage in our marketing or business. Um, according to YouTube, a lot of my information today, you can go online and you can look up success for YouTube. You can Google, you know, you can do that just as good as I can. There's, you know, there's no school out there that's really teaching this stuff in depth. There are courses you can take and things, but what I uh, always like to do is I like to go right to the source. So I went to YouTube and I said, what does YouTube say? What do the creators of YouTube say is how they, you can be successful using it? They want you to, generates them money, so they want to give you these tools, right? So they give you this formula for success, and believe it or not, it's only four steps. <laughs> but again, that'll you'll encompass a lot of things in these four steps. Um, first one, create a channel. Okay, so be found. Keep them watching, and drive fandom. These are it's oversimplified, really. When they put that out there. They, they uh, put these down and then they will show you how to achieve the results for each one of these steps. Um, and we'll consider aspects of the formula now as we go through the presentation and uh, you'll learn and start seeing how they'll set you up for success. So right now we've already considered what you can use YouTube for, formula for success, what you want out of YouTube, and um, that's a lot of information I kind of threw at you. 
already. <laughs> but um, with that in mind, it's just an underlay of the three topics that I really want to focus on here today. Um, we're going to talk about branding for YouTube. We're going to talk about vlogging for YouTube. And we're going to talk about doing what you love for YouTube. Um, first up, we're going to talk about brand identity with YouTube. Uh, I'll open it up with the video. Hopefully it'll go a little quicker this time since I queued up the internet last time. And it's about three minutes. I tried to keep the videos short and pick really concise ones then that really are relatable to our topic today. So we're going to have some video in. We're talking about YouTube. Oh, it's really high. Annoying orange is exactly that. It's an orange that's annoying. It's an anthropomorphic orange who is very annoying. So when I was making the very first Annoying Orange episode, uh, while I was animating, it was actually going to be Annoying Apple because it's an orange and an apple. But I liked Annoying Apple because of the alliteration. But after doing the animation, I kind of liked how the features looked on the orange better. So I decided to go with Annoying Orange instead. Branding is a little bit different on YouTube uh, compared to other mediums because I feel like you have to be a little bit more succinct with your titles, with your imagery, all of that stuff because you're all about grabbing people right away. With the stuff that I do, like Annoying Orange, that says right away, that's Annoying Orange. You know exactly what you're gonna get. If you expect anything else otherwise, you're sorely mistaken. Now, one of the ways that we stay consistent across all platforms is to make sure that the content itself stays true to the brand. So, if you've ever seen an Annoying Orange episode, you'll know that there is a specific kind of formula to it. Uh, new characters introduced, Orange and them have a back and forth dialogue. There's some annoying puns. And then the character most of the time gets knifed, blown up, whatever. It's, uh, it's mixing you know, silly jokes and puns and fun things like that with kind of that cartoon violence that I grew up watching. And that's one of the things that I do with the videos that make sure that that branding is consistent throughout the whole thing. Visually, we stay consistent with orange uh, via thumbnails, any of the artwork that you see on the YouTube page, Google Plus page, all of that. Uh, we, we keep with very bright, vivid colors a lot of times. I mean, orange in the thumbnail is absolutely mandatory, especially if he's in the video because he's kind of the focal point. He's the one that people return to every single week. So that's the character we want up front and center. When people go to the subscription box, I want to know that when they, they're scrolling through, they see orange. Oh, that, that's annoying, there's annoying orange, gotta watch that one. I'm a big fan of kind of, you know, simplistic, but yet eye-catching graphics, and that's what we try and do across everything. It's also really important to make sure that any other kind of things that you have out there that you might make as far as like merchandise and stuff like that, that that also stays true to your brand. The very first app that we made for Annoying Orange, it was a game. And the first iteration of it, we got it back and it totally did not fit with the brand. It wasn't that much fun to us. And it was hard, but we had to go back and just say, hey, you know, this isn't true to what our, our standards are. So we need to go back to the drawing board. And we did and created a second iteration that was much, much better, a lot of fun, did really well. So I think that that's one of the things to look out for is just to make sure that you stay on point and are happy with uh, everything that you put out there for your brand. Hope you guys found this interesting. If you'd like to know more about branding yourself on YouTube, click the annotation or the link below, or you can click the link to check out Annoying Orange. Mm -hmm. Bye. And the orange really is annoying. <laughs> My son, who is 16 now, was watching Annoying Orange, and I could not watch it with him. So everything that the, the gentleman said was definitely on point with his brand. He's very honest about it, and, uh, and it was very interesting that he said, you know, if something didn't fit it, then he didn't go with it, and he stayed true to it. So with your branding, we touched on it there, YouTube consists of channels. It's just like TV. You can set up a channel, and you can go to different channels, and you can watch them. So anyone can create a YouTube channel, Believe it or not, you can have a little place for your videos to live, and the channel is an opportunity to promote your brand through viewing audiences. Um, like he said, everything on his channel was on point with his brand, from the thumbnails to the colors to how it's represented. 
So it's it's really should be a focus on why you should brand your channel. It can establish your channel's identity. If it's eye catching, it attracts viewers. Like he said, if they see the orange in the in the roll down, they're like, oh, I gotta watch orange. I see it up there, and it'll help them bring them back for more. You design that symbol to convey a consistent message about your channel. Most uh, viewers will be introduced to your channel through a single video that they find in a YouTube search or suggested videos embedded on a site. So use the branding to let the audience know that at a glance, this is you on YouTube. All right? And that way, they'll find you uh, and your channel a whole lot easier. So what does your brand consistently, uh, or identity consist of on YouTube? Content is king a lot of times in most areas. Focus on the content. Your brand should correspond to the type of content you produce. You'll want to convey your channel's key message so that viewers know what to expect. So keep it simple. Make sure that all of your videos, including your channel trailer, uh, align with your branding. So keep it familiar. Um, make people comfortable. That is, that's what uh, they'll, they'll connect to your channel that way. It's a place they'll want to spend time. You're really inviting them to stay there. Make it discoverable. Um, branding should make it easier for viewers to find your videos and channel. Tag your videos. You can do this with using uh, text-based information, um, such as titles or themes. Those are things that SEO and search engines look for, um, help boost your video getting seen. Uh, you can also post your video across other channels. You can take your video and put it across social media platforms. Uh, this will help viewers find your, find your channel even more easily because you're out there. You're just not hoping organically they're going to come along and go, oh, this video is here. You have to put in a little bit of legwork. And people, you know, they love sharing videos. Come on, put it on Facebook, put it on social media. Go to forums that you're involved in. Whatever your industry is, chances are you're in some, com uh, in some communications and some conversations online with other people who are in the industry. Share that with them and they'll, they'll share it, they'll like it, they'll share it. What's the worst they can do? Not share it, but at least they've seen it. And then it'll be in the back of their mind for some time. So, if you consistently convey your brand across YouTube, then it gives credibility to your brand too. You know, it, it allows you to be, what I touched on earlier, a leader in your industry. People will look to you for the standards you're setting, and those standards come across as standards for business. And uh, that gives people a lot of comfort. Vlogging, here's a new word, <laughs> English. We like to make up words, and uh, vlogging is video blogging. It's just a term now that we call, instead of a, a regular blog, which blogs are basically diary posts online, that people talk about different points of information of interest, whether it's personal or business-wise, and it's writing an article and posting it online. That's what a blog is. So instead of magazines and print, we're, we're on the internet. So vlogging, is taking it that one step further. And we're putting a person there. And we're giving a face. And we're still talking about things that we love, but we're conveying it in a different way. So I'm going to start again with a YouTube video. And nice, friendly looking face there. Talk about vlogging a little bit. And I'm going to hold it. Did uh, holding this up help with the sound a little bit? Could you hear that when I? Hey, I'm Matt Koval, and I, I am video blogging in the middle of a public sidewalk. To be honest, I don't feel all that comfortable. I feel a little silly, Sorry. and I feel like I probably look like an idiot. Hello. <laughs> Why do creators do this? Why record yourself for the whole world to see? Why? Easy. Because being yourself on camera can create a deep and long-lasting connection to your viewers. Video blogging has been YouTube at its core. In fact, the first ever video uploaded to the site in April of 2005 was someone talking to the camera. All right, so here we are on the uh, YouTube was one of the first platforms that allowed people to tell their story on camera without a middleman or gatekeeper. 
and since the popularity of the site has been largely built on the video blog. In this lesson of the Creator Academy, we're going to talk about why video blogging is so effective, the ways creators do it on YouTube, and how you can get started right away. Click the link below this video and read up on how to vlog. So that's my little segue into um, vlogging, first of all, but into how um, Google and YouTube wants you to be successful. They have created a whole academy on YouTube, and this is called Creator Academy. And in there, they are giving you the steps at no charge to learn how to be successful on, on YouTube. So that's simplified formula for success that uh, I showed you a little earlier. They bring all those points to light and life. You can take in the courses. They tell you how long the courses are. Some of them are as, as little as 15 minutes. Some take a little longer. And they break them up into different sections. And you can download the PDF for them. You can watch videos. Very interactive, a lot of fun. And, and that's where I get a lot of the information that I'm sharing with you today because YouTube is going to keep that information current and they're going to tell you how to stay on trend and they're going to tell you, you know, how to use them to the best of, their, of your advantage. So um, when you get a chance to go back and take another look at YouTube, scroll down to the bottom. You'll see a little area in the, in the bottom menu and it's called Creator. You click on Creator and you're in the Creator Academy. It's like this little nugget. It's like a, an Easter egg as if you're a gamer or a movie buff, you're always looking for the Easter eggs out there to find something interesting and different. Um, you'll go in there and that's where you'll continue your discovery of YouTube after today's introduction. So with vlogging, what does vlogging get you? Well, vlogging will allow your fans to access the real you. Uh, this can help create a more loyal fan base. This uh, gives them a reason to follow you because you become someone that they know or they feel that they know. And whatever you do, wherever you go, they're going with you because you're in their pocket. So uh, creating that fan base, vlogging really helps that uh, become, life, become a big reality. Connects you with people like you around the world. Um, when people get to know the real you, it opens up the potential for people around the world who share your interests and your um, sensibilities to meet and talk with you. Again, YouTube is social media, so as we're putting something out, we're being social with the people who are connecting and keeping conversations going. Then, how that comes back to your business is that the connection to your business becomes much more powerful because someone in your organization has become the face or an extension of the brand. And people connect with people better than they do with graphics. So it kind of changes the dynamics of your interaction with folks. Um, they're going from looking at videos from yet another company to building a relationship with a human. And relationship building, we know, becomes long-term strategy in your marketing plans. And it can help uh, acquire your customers or clients or friends, whatever you're looking for, for life. With vlogging, videos are typically easy to make. Okay, we're talking YouTube, people think, oh, I'm not gonna have money for production costs and post and script and animation. And, and with vlogging, it's commonly accepted that you don't need that because it's more personal. It's someone sitting there. It could just be someone sitting there stationary at their desk talking, like Matt Belisai that I mentioned earlier. He just sits at his desk, pours the wine, and starts talking <laughs> after he chugs like that much of it. <laughs> so it's not, that's not very good. Um, but they're not as hard to do, and sometimes uh, they're just simply recorded with a handheld, put it on a tripod. Try not to use a selfie stick, though. <laughs> I don't think that'll go over very well. You can as you're walking down the street, like that guy did, if you're doing an action shot. That would be totally cool. Or if you're going on a roller coaster, or, you know, it depends what your topic is, so there is a place for it. Um, and it can be uh, a lot easier to keep maintaining doing videos if you set yourself up that way from the start. 
and there was my next point. It provides a more sustainable channel. So when the videos are easier to make, you can be consistent with your content. People are already familiar. They know, OK, I, I'm used to how they are and used to their face. So the content then can come and, and, the, and then be absorbed a lot easier. Um, it's funny because YouTube vlogs used to look, be looked at as people who were just wanting to talk. It was more of a hobby or, you know, the lady who was standing up for Britney Spears a few years ago that went viral for a few of the wrong negative reasons. And that's what YouTube initially people were feeling like was this is people wanting to voice their opinions. But it's really come away from just being hobbies. Um, if you're really serious about creating and marketing on YouTube and, and you use it on a regular basis, as regular as you can be in small business, then you could start making money with it. There are ways, and it's a different seminar altogether, <laughs> that you can make money um, uh, through Google with um, having ads placed with your video. There are affiliate program style thing? Well, it's more like um, when you sell ad space, yeah. Like you're, the ads that come up, if you're a, a channel that's highly watched, like Smosh Brothers, which is a gaming channel, and millions of people watch Smosh Brothers and they post, post all the time, then Google sells the ad space in front of your videos. That's why those ads come up and you get a cut of that. So some of that goes into your business. Most of it goes into Google. But if you make enough videos and you have enough followers and you have enough watches, the commissions really start rolling in. So that's where if you're serious and you want to get a viewership and really want to bring it to that level, it could become your business. The Smosh Brothers make millions. <laughs> talking about video games, sitting in their chairs, which is amazing because they're talking about what they're passionate about and they're doing it. But yeah, that's a big, it's a whole other area. And in Google Academy, uh, Creator Academy, you could get further into that on your own too. And uh, then, the, then it leads me to the, the third point that I wanted to focus on today, um, making what you love. Uh, we talked about being authentic and if you don't love it, don't talk about it. And uh, I'm not sure uh, if everyone in the f room is familiar with Russell Simmons, but he's an entrepreneur in the United States, uh, known for fashion, known for movies, music, beverages. He's a, he's a mogul. Um, and I'm gonna let him open up this part of the conversation about um, why he's successful. Great. I have to love what I do. I have to believe in what I do. I couldn't buy a drink or I couldn't sell liquor. I couldn't sell things I don't use, you know, for instance. I couldn't sell any animal product. I don't eat animal product. I don't believe in it, you know, so I couldn't sell uh, anything with animal product in it. I love designing clothes. I design clothes. I do what I love, you know. I made music before I actually got to sell it. You know, I loved music before I sold it. The films, I like telling the stories. I've always told stories. Now I'm in Hollywood, I have a bunch of movies in development. So I, only, I do what I love, you know, and I only invest in things I love. This energy drink, this particular drink, I started to like it a lot. And I know it's not a health drink. It's just a healthier alternative than anything else in the market. And so I like it, and I, I bought it. <laughs> and wouldn't that be nice? Oh, I like something, so I buy it. I just want to buy an energy drink company, make more millions, why not? But I wanted to show you that for two reasons. One, it's like a vlog, simple. He's just there in front of the camera in the background. He's talking with you and he got his message across. He was very succinct. He says, okay, let's do what you love. And it just rolled into the next one, didn't it? Just trying to steal my thunder. So when you're doing what you love, you wanna make sure that your ideas come from a place from genuine interest, like we mentioned, passion. Um, but make sure your ideas are sustainable. There has to be something that you can continue talking about because that will increase your enjoyment of doing it. You don't want your YouTube presence to start feeling like a chore because that comes off as disingenuine as well. Um, you want to keep the channel going. So if it's not a job, you love it and you'll love what you do. Um, so when you talk about keeping yourself happy, then you're going to be keeping your viewers happy because essentially they're connected into how you're feeling. So the fundamentals of what we want to break down 
on keeping yourself happy is be inspired and be sustainable. Next point is to get these viewers. You need to reach out and acquire your audience and never stop seeking new fans. Never think, I've got enough. You always need to get a little bit more, so it's always good to keep pushing yourself out there. Market your videos all the time. Um, post the video links like we mentioned on accounts or any blogs, your social media to the forums. Um, another interesting part is to start connecting to the blogging community. There's bloggers out there who just want to talk to bloggers. And they're all talking about their passions. So start getting into you know, the blogger community and share it with them. Um, the more places that you put it on the, idi on the idi idiot net, the internet, can be that sometimes, <laughs> especially on YouTube. Oh my. Uh, the more times you put it out there, the more times that you're going to get some traffic, right? So when you were thinking about getting your, your viewership up, the fundamentals are be shareable, so it's something enjoyable, or, can, or a relative people can connect to, discoverable, got to be out there promoting it so that people can discover it, click on it and watch it, accessible falls in with that, and collaborative, the collaborative part comes, comes from being social and talking with those other people online who are trying to achieve results similar to you. Keep viewers happy. Customers, viewers, clients, these are always the people we want happy. After ourselves, of course. You can't give from an empty cup. However, you're, you gotta get these people to come back and relate to you all the time. So give your viewers what they subscribe for. You promise them something, you give it to them, all right? Maintain that relationship. The fundamentals for this are be conversational. Be interactive, be consistent, big for me, consistency, they know what to expect, and be targeted. You know, you can't, you're not going to be talking to the whole world. You have to just, it comes back to your goal setting. Who are you going to talk and who are you going to be your visitors? So um, when you think about, ooh, why did my computer go to sleep? Okay, so we're ditching that, we're moving on. It did its job for a little while, decided it needed a break. <laughs> uh, kind of took my thunder out <laughs> as I'm winding things up, but I'll forgive it. So um, basically, just to wrap up, YouTube is unique, but it is a lot like other marketing. Uh, you need to look at your peer industries, look at people who are doing what you similarly want to do, but figure out how you can do it better for you and make that connection. Um, track the latest trending videos. That's easy to do because YouTube puts it right up front and center. They'll put their trends and most popular searches. Now mind you, uh, it does start getting tailored to what you actually like. Um, so you should then go and, and check out the YouTube blog or their news feeds through Facebook or Twitter or their Google Plus, um, they are going to tell you what's trending and what's been hot on the, on the website in case you can't find it in your organic searches. And I was going to close it off with um, what I love about working in my industry with YouTube. Um, I can sit and watch epic fails <laughs> all day. You like, it, it, some, I, I still watch America's Funny Home videos. The jury is out if Alfonso Ribeiro is going to be a good host. It's, it's Carlton from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I'm again dating myself. But Tom Bergeron retired, which it affected me. And uh, we're having a new host. But every Sunday as a family, we still gather around America's Finest Home Videos. And that's really why I know YouTube will work, because it's essentially the same formula, having people connect over something visual that they can watch together. Um, but what I love about YouTube is when I can connect into the human consciousness as a whole. And I love when I get to work on projects that allow me to do that. With my role at Technomedia, I have a great client who I work with quite a bit. It's uh, the Prince Edward Island Association for Community Living. And this association's mandate is to make sure that uh, we have a fully inclusive island 
for people who are living with intellectual disabilities or who are on the autism specter. Um, and that means in schools, workplace, recreation, what, what have you, everything inclusive. And they came to us saying that they needed an emotional trigger to help people connect with their association because they don't get a lot of funding from government and the past government uh, federally cut out all their funding actually that they used to receive. And so they were going to have to become sustainable on their own. So how do you do that? You, 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 people aren't going to give money unless there's a trigger and there's a lot of good causes and, uh, and organizations that people are already giving to. So they felt, and I agreed, that video is a way for people to con connect with their mandate and the people they support and the families they support. So what I'll do is uh, I'll get you to, I'll put the video here for, and then if you want to just uh, come up from your seat for a moment, if you wish, you don't have to. So we've created them a YouTube channel. We started out and um, hired a, a video company. We don't do the video ourselves, but we did help uh, direct and we had the music composed um, to follow the mood and set the tone throughout the video. Um, and we helped secure our talent within the video. And you'll see that there's quite a number of folks in studio time and things like that. So every part of this project was collaborative and it was all to emote and create emotional trigger. When you find out I have Down syndrome, will you still want me? When you find out my child is autistic, will you treat her with respect? When you see I have an actual adult disability, will you see a disability or a possibility? Will you see me? Will you say hello? He was our Easter Seals ambassador this year. When the kids at school make fun of me, will you stand up for me? You have to swim really hard. Will you help me? When I have something to say, will you hear me? When I need a job, will you hire me? When I found love, will you be happy for me? When I die, will we see how ugly I am? When things get difficult, will you help? When I'm aging and no longer able, will you help? Will you? Will you? Will you? Will, Will you? you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. The PEI Association for Community Living supports people with intellectual disabilities and their families to participate fully in all aspects of community life but we can't do it alone. When the PEI Association for Community Living needs you, will you help? Please donate and join the movement towards inclusion. Yeah. So they opened their meetings and seminars and put that online and it gained a lot of traction um, when they put it up about nine months ago. It uh, got press feed and they were using this video to their advantage. They have over 4,000 views for a Prince Edward Island video that was only circleized. So heard about QBS. Jeepers, okay. always doing that. So, and they were pretty happy with the success. Now, again, that's a production. <laughs> and that isn't always what we'll have in our budgets. But, you know, if you love something, though, it shows that you can c get people to connect with it. And, um, and that's basically what I want all of you to do and take back with you, just that emotion and trying to connect with people to your business and using YouTube to do it. That's really all I had to say. <laughs> How long was that? Because there was an awful lot that got said. There was a lot that gets said, yeah. And it was just yeah. about a minute? 
That was three minutes, which is a long video now by most standards. Most of us are getting bored at 30 seconds, to be honest, unless it's really catchy, fast content. But they want to use that when they're going in and sourcing funding. So they're sitting with a potential donor and they're trying to set the mood for the meeting or they have a, a seminar and they're trying to get everyone in a collective consciousness. They wanted to be able to say those things and represent all types of people they support. So yeah, it's a long video. Three minutes is not your typical. A minute's good. <laughs> Yeah, or, in, or if you're talking, if, you, if your program is talking about certain things, it just has to be able to move. Right. Just move, have, have rhythm. Like one, one minute's a great video. Yeah, I find, I'm doing, I'm gonna be doing another five videos um, in another series that we're just doing one minute each interview style fairly shortly, so. Anyone else have any questions on what I brought? Yo, feel free to have seats again, unless you like <laughs> standing up all the standing desks. Standing desks and all that are all the trend. Town of Stratford is circulating them throughout their offices now. Did you have a question? Um, oh, I, I stole your thunder too. <laughs> Anybody? How often do we need to post the, the video online? That is, that's going to be up to your plan. Okay, so we realize, especially as a small business owner, you're not going to be able to be doing it as your primary task all the time but you should set a schedule and stick to it if you can plan out okay for the first six months i would like to do six videos okay so and you can see what kind of traction that you get from that i'm not saying that's your magical formula of number maybe you want to do more than six in six months but whatever you commit to there has to be consistency of when you are going and putting them out um, in our office, we have an initiative um, that we did purely because we love food, um, PEI Foodies, and it's an online blog, and we make sure that we post on Tuesdays and Fridays. Now, <laughs> my bad, we didn't get the Tuesday one out <laughs> this week, so we'll get the Friday. But the plan is always Tuesdays and Fridays, have a little something to say. If you're not making a video, we didn't even talk about sharing them. You can make part of your um, YouTube strategy sharing videos. At Technomedia, what we do all the time to make sure our audience is connected in with us, we share videos we like. It might be related to our subject of our business, just might be something we find funny. But again, that's helping you build that relationship. So We've been, the same way like a Facebook that you like. And you through your social media, I share, we share videos all the time um, through there. And that helps people see, uh, they help us to get to know us a little bit more. They know that we have treat day every Friday. <laughs> we know, they know that uh, we're going for the J's right now. You know, and those are, are things that when you get your audience and your fans, we consider our clients and our friends, they're all our fans, they're following us. So share videos that relate. You don't have to make them all the time, but use YouTube. Do your research and see what things that can benefit your business that you can share about or build that relationship. So you'll have to figure out what your best schedule is for yourself. There's no maximum and there's no minimum. Just be consistent with what you put out. Is that okay? Does that answer your question? You're welcome. Come back to you yet? Yeah, I was kind of wondering, when you actually make the video, yeah. and you're putting in, uh, I guess it's, it's not a hashtag, but it's kind of yep. a video description. Yeah, the meta tags, yeah. Meta tags, thank you. Yeah. Um, is it good to just try and as many in there as you possibly can no, okay. that's the old school way yeah. that was the old school way of trying to trick um, search engines to read you right. now it has to be valid it has to be valid to the content that you're talking about um, and the search engines will pick up on the validity of what the tags are to the content okay. so make it concise and make it real do you have a, like a number in mind or something no, it just depends on the topic. Like if you're talking about Blue Jays, you put Blue Jays, baseball, sport, you know, yeah. champions, you know, something like that that might spur a search engine to make it discoverable, but it needs to be relatable. So if, and if you start putting in a whole lot, they don't like that either. They start seeing that as junk and they'll skim over you. So yeah, good question though. I actually want to add 
that. This is yep. a question. Um, we do a lot of SEO with our website. Like, we know we have people scan over it and do a lot of work with it. Awesome. We have a YouTube channel, but we haven't really gotten into the SEO side of it. So and the analytics. The tags, yeah. You know, how else can we really, besides sharing the results? Yeah, you can, you can find out how people are using your YouTube. It's very similar to your website. You have analytics that I'm sure you're tracking through Google. YouTube has an analytics area all on its own that you can track your video. So you can see if people, the bounce rate on it, you can see if people watched all of it, you can see where people came from. Does it you can, queries as well? Uh, it, uh, I do believe it does show keyword searches. They change it all the time. So it's really good to keep consistent and going back in, but I do believe they are showing those keywords so you can make a part of your strategy. Um, and if you look, yeah, just go into the analytics side of the video and you'll be able to find it. Okay. Yeah, it's good to have that information because then it helps you strategize the next step. Well, if they didn't like that, you know, if the bounce rate was like five seconds, where did I lose them in that five seconds? Was it because I didn't drink my wine fast enough? <laughs> or <laughs> was it because the mood didn't change or I didn't get into topic? It's, uh, because we've been kind of going backwards quite a bit with the website where we'll take our queries and then put them into our meta tags, which aren't necessarily seen on the website, but they're tagged to the page. Yeah, they're tagged to the page yeah, for your search engine. Yeah, didn't even realize people were finding us with. You know, yeah. it wasn't obvious tags at all. For example, it was the name of the owner of the company. We never thought of putting that in as the content. We thought, oh, okay, yeah. well, if we're, we're a tour operator, so we put, you know, Bermuda or something. Yeah. <laughs> but they were finding us through searches for the owner. Oh, yeah, because yeah. this is the island. It's like, yes. you know the company that so-and-so owns? Yeah, that's where I need to go. Where, where, where is that? Uh, exactly. Google, like Matt Sullivan owns what? I had someone on YouTube or Facebook yesterday. She's in Roller Derby Club, and she, she needed to find out. She sees all these empty buildings around town. She's like, okay, who owns the old building on St. Pe Bingo building on St. Peter's Road? Two seconds, she had that answer. Well, okay, who owns the old this? Two seconds, she had that answer. So it's just yeah. the island way. But yeah, <laughs> trying to think outside those searches. It's interesting trying what your target audience would be looking for. Anything else that I can assist with? Now this is information, a lot of I'm sorry to interrupt. No, uh, that's when okay. When you're adding music to a video, yeah. um, I know there's a section where you can add, YouTube has like free music you can Oh yeah, from. canned stuff, yeah. Um, but uh, is, there, is there some sort of law in place where you can play something under a certain amount of seconds? No. It's co copyright. It's all yeah. about copyright yeah. and giving credit to, and YouTube is strict on it. It's yeah. uh, if they find that you have so not really. given proper credit or, you know, you see people put up music videos and they're just the lyrics. They do say the, all credit goes to the artist in this pop music company. As long as you do something like that, then you can get away with it. But it, it's, it, there's no minimum amount of time. You have to acknowledge credit and copyright laws or YouTube just you see the lady, she's the lady, she pops up and says, uh-uh, this video content was not real. We took it down. And sometimes you can get fined. <laughs> like, you don't want to get into any legal troubles for copyright. Yeah, right, okay. So yeah, they do have a section on that in the academy. So you can look that up about what the copyright restrictions are in content. Yeah, I just, wasn't, I just couldn't find anything clear about whether, you know, it was very, it's a lot of gray area involved. Yeah. Like, I mean, use a song after the artist has been dead for a certain amount of years, 70 or something like that, but if yeah. someone has remade the song, then that... That person's getting the royalties, getting and, the and or it depends how protected of how they kept up their copyright laws, yeah. like, you know, there are, yeah, it's... It, it seems like you can use, like, some people have said you can use it if it's under 10 seconds long, but then other people... Yeah, my, my advice is always to err on the side of caution. You know, the lady that was down, not to bring up a controversial subject, but the lady that was down in the States that um, wasn't allowing uh, gay marriages to be processed through the courts, when she came out of jail, they played Survivor's Eye of the Tiger. They only played it for a second and played it. They're suing her for $3.2 million. Oh, wow. Because they, she played her, that, informa that song with her agenda that wasn't authorized. Right. So she did not respect the copyright laws and now she's got that on her hands too. So and that was just you know, do 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 Yeah, she had a pretty strong message. Yeah, there was a pretty strong message. So if if the person, even though you're only using ten seconds of their song yes. and they find it, because they have people paid to go out and find whether yeah. stuff is being used and they don't like your message, yeah. you can get some trouble. So I'm air on the side of caution. Yeah. 
fun fact. I'm just sorry. Not it's okay. Anybody, but You're this, left. It could shock you with the copyright laws for music. Yeah. We do a lot of events and information things. If you even play music at an event, yep. the place, like say it's the Delta, they have to pay copyright laws for that. Yep. And like most of the time, it's in the price of your event. Like you. Yeah. You don't necessarily it. know. Yeah. But. But you have to let them know, and if you don't let them know, then you get in a lot of trouble. And yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just like an event. You think, you know, you're just Yeah, you're travel. allowed to do that. Yeah, yeah. but no. It's, a, it's all the behind the scenes stuff that you have to think about. Yeah. It's good. I didn't know that. All right. Well, I know I gave you a lot to digest. It was uh, quite a bit of information. Hopefully, it wasn't too dry for you. And I apologize for our various little technical <laughs> difficulties. But if you want to continue the conversation, I, I've given each of you my direct contact information. I am, however, going away to Toronto tomorrow. I'm taking my family on our family trip. I have two teenagers and a four-year-old, so 17, 16, and four. The teens were working this summer. We didn't want to interrupt their, their time to earn their spending money and blow it all in the same two months. <laughs> so we booked our vacation for this week, go up and see our family. Um, so we'll be in a van for two days and then gone out there for a week and then come back. But after that, <laughs> we can continue talking individually if you like. And if you have questions in the meantime, just throw them at me and I'll just answer them. While they're in top of mind, just throw them at me and I'll, I'll answer them best I can and then get back to you. Cool? All right. Well, thank you everybody for your time. This is great for me. I got out. I got to talk to people. I got to do fun stuff and not chained to my desk. So um, we'll let you go and you guys have to do what you got to do and then we'll be seeing you as we as we move along, we're all in the tourism industry, so we'll be seeing each other at mixers and things like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Allison, for allowing us to do this too.